Perfect. It looks like everybody's here. So good afternoon and welcome to this last webinar in our current series of Recover and Rise, our digital accelerator. We're joined today by a whole host of people. Um, we've got Gareth Steer here from the Business Hot House, who's going to talk to us about funding opportunities. And we have got four digital champions here uh, for you to pick their brains and ask about how this brilliant growth support works. So before I introduce those and before we get started, just as I say, we're in the last webinar of our current Freedom Works series. Um, we have a short break then, and then um, we go on to series four, which is all about growth and expansion. And that one's hosted by Always Possible. Um, and if you're interested in booking on that, the booking um, is now live through Eventbrite, same link as previously, and you can actually book all of those into your calendar. So please do. Um, as normal, we will be recording this session and um, some lots of interaction and engagement would be wonderful and some Q&As would be great for our panel. So if you've got any questions, anything that you'd like to know, please pop them in the chat and I will endeavour to get them all answered for you as we go along. Um, I'm not going to talk about our funding opportunities because I'm going to let our experts do that. And neither am I going to talk about all our growth champions because they can introduce themselves as we go along. But here's all the lovely pictures, just so you know that they're all here with us today. Or four of them are here with us today. So without further ado, let me get rid of those slides and introduce you, pass you over to Gareth Sear, who joins us from the Business Hot House in Chichester. Welcome, Gareth. Excellent. Thank you very much, Cheryl. And uh, always nice to uh, be referred to as an expert. Whether I fulfil that or not, I don't know. But uh, but yes, thank you very much. Right, I'm going to share my screen, hopefully, um, and see what happens. And clearly, I then lose everything that's uh, on Zoom. Can you guys see a big slide that says the business hot house? Excellent, brilliant. Okay, so I'll, uh, as Cheryl uh, said, I'm Gareth Sear, and uh, I'm from the University of Chichester, and we run a program called the Business Hot House. Uh, the Business Hot House is all about grants, guidance, and growth for businesses and pre-start entrepreneurs. And, uh, and now I can't get my slides to advance. <laughs> I do apologize. That's it. So we've got uh, six strands of support that are available to, to businesses. So we've got productivity and growth support, access to finance support, monetization of innovation, leadership and management development, startup support, and then we've got the big grant fund. So we've got about 2.8 million pound of grants to distribute to businesses in the coast capital region. And that's what I'm going to be talking about now. The whole of the program is delivered by six expert delivery partners. Uh, you can see them all listed there. Uh, University of Chichester, I'm the expert, an expert. Uh, Sussex Innovation Centre, YTKO, WSX Enterprise, Brighton Hove City Council, who manage the grant fund process and the Prince's Trust as well. So a little bit about the grant fund. So we launched for grant fund in March last year. So great time to be launching these sort of things as everybody's scrambling around trying to survive in their businesses and things like that. So we had a bit of a rocky start to it all, but it's certainly picked up now. And um, and in this, uh, this last quarter, we've distributed around about £300,000 of grants, which brings our total to date is uh, around about £1.6 million that we've, we've given away. So there's still a big chunk of money uh, that can be invested into growth projects for businesses. Um, as I said, it's managed by Brighton Hove City Council. So we've got a team over there that manage all of the process for contracting through Brighton Hove City Council. And then the funding comes back out through Brighton Hove City Council. Um, it works on a match fund basis, like a lot of these grants. It's a 40% grant with a 60% contribution from the organisation that's applying for the grant. So, for example, if you had a um, £10,000 website that you wanted to get developed uh, that would help with the growth and development of your business, then um, you can apply for a £4,000 grant towards the costs of that, but you have to find the other £6,000 costs. And as we say there, it must be linked to growth. So you need to be demonstrating that growth in your business. But we understand, and so does HM Government and the EU, that obviously growth has been a little bit challenging over the last 18 months, two years for a lot of businesses. So we're looking at 
not just growth based on that, but it's, you know, people that are getting back to a position they were in prior to uh, all the lockdowns. <clears throat> so the grants are available can be for anything. In fact, I haven't updated my slide as we've just changed some of the rules on it. So it can be from £1,500 up to £170,000. So that's based on a thing called de minimis state aid. So if you've had aid or other coast capital grants or things like that, the maximum you can get across that period is £170,000. Grants can be used for capital equipment or revenue costs. Uh, and as I said, businesses provide 60% of the costs themselves. So uh, those capital projects could be for things like plant and machinery. We funded uh, a number of businesses that uh, are making their business processes more efficient by getting in uh, different new, more modern machinery, such as CNC lathes. Uh, new milling machines, uh, I think we've had um, 3D printers, a whole range of different machinery, bottling plants, uh, brew, brew lines for breweries, so a whole range of different uh, items of plant machinery. Can be used for premises improvements, does depend a little bit on your lease conditions. Um, it can be used for growth consultancy as well. So <laughs> potentially if you want to carry on working with one of the digital champions after you've done your bit with Coaster Capital, you might be able to get um, a grant towards the, the costs of that consultancy. Uh, same with leadership and management development, software development, that probably ties in quite well with this series of programs that we've been running, uh, that have been running up to now, is, uh, and we've also supported um, a number of businesses with getting, they've reached the point in their growth where they've got to, you know, you've got to a million, one and a half million pound turnover, and they kind of need to move away from running their businesses on Excel spreadsheets. So we've had a couple of businesses like that who want to get some bespoke software developed, uh, whether that's content manage, uh, contact management systems, um, inventory systems, uh, production management systems as well. So bespoke software development um, and other digital platforms that support growth along with specialist IT equipment as well. What it can't be used for, the qualifications, retail premises, and all the things that you'd expect as well within there, such as staff salaries, refinancing, paying debt, buying stock, normal day-to-day -day business costs. So we some, had someone try to um, sneak in uh, on their grant project, um, printer cartridges were a little bit like, no, really that is just a normal business cost. It's not going to really help the growth of your business. Um, statutory legislative requirements, we can't fund that. Uh, we can't fund recruitment costs. So one of my favourites um, is that we can't support nuclear decommissioning. So I'm sure everyone who's heard this, uh, heard my uh, my talk many times, is just a bit like, not again, Gareth. <laughs> Um, the process, we've simplified the process um, over the last couple of weeks and have had that agreed. So we do now just require to have an application form filled out, but it needs to be a very comprehensive application form. It needs to um, really explain what your growth project is. We need to know a lot about your business, who's running your business um, and how the growth project fits overall with your business strategy or your business plan. So once the application form has been filled out, um, we will need to get some supplementary information from you, such as a cash flow forecast, ideally a business plan um, and a previous sets of accounts. Um, so we can look at the viability of the business as well. Again, we do take into account that some businesses have had a challenge in the last couple of years. Um, from that, we uh, carry out due diligence on the business, on the project, make sure all the costs are eligible for it all. It then goes to a panel. Um, if a grant is over £5,000, the panel sit every two weeks, so you can turn this around very quickly. Um, then if the panel agree to fund, it goes to, you get a grant contract sent out to you. Then the grant is paid back to you on 40% uh, on evidence of defraud if your goods and services have been received. Post then, your project and your grant is, is monitored up until the end of our funding, which is uh, September 2023. So that was a very brief overview uh, of all the aspects of the um, Invest4 grant fund. Here's a few examples of what we've supported. Uh, so Select My Talent, uh, they uh, had funding which helped them to develop a new applicant tracking system to make their business much more efficient. So these are airline pilots that set up like an airline pilot recruitment business. Uh, so that was software development that we supported them with. 
Roisin's kefir water. So we supported her with marketing. So she got a grant fund to redo her branding and her website so she can create more sales. My room outside, again, this was another um, marketing um, uh, project that we supported. So this guy's seen, obviously, over the COVID period, a lot of growth in his business, wanted to capitalize on that. So wanted a new workshop, uh, a new website and redevelop his branding, which you can see there up on his workshop wall. And this chap uh, from Juice Up, he again, just before the uh, all the uh, lockdowns, he started producing uh, glass bottles of uh, returnable glass bottles of uh, fresh juice. And he'd just been doing the juicing from his kitchen, from home juicing machines. And uh, we supported him with his growth uh, and his investment into a commercial uh, juicing machine. So, uh, so he could you know, basically create a lot more product in a lot quicker time. So again, really supporting the productivity of his business. So a little bit of an overview, some of the businesses that we've supported, some of the projects that we've supported. Um, and obviously, if you need any more information about it all, let me know. Uh, they're all our community um, spaces that we're putting out all our information on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. And if you want to sign up to the email um, marketing, then do let me know. That's it from me, just with regards to the Invest4 Grant Fund. If you've got any questions, Brilliant. Uh, do let me know. Thanks, Sorry about my camera. I was, my head was virtually <laughs> just in the bottom corner. We can of see my, you now. We could just yeah. see the top of your head for a while. But we can <laughs> I see do you apologize. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Gareth, there's a couple of questions that have come up in the chat. I don't know whether you can see those or whether you'd like me to read them out for you. If you could read them out, because yeah. uh, I can't see them at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I um, can. So oh, okay. First I can now. one. Oh, yep. does our business need to have a minimum turnover to qualify for this grant? Uh, well, I would say. No, not necessarily. Um, so we can work with any businesses with any sort of level of turnover, but it depends as an element of what size grant you're looking for compared to what size business are you doing? And is there the cash in the business to provide the match funding? And can you afford to fund the growth in your business? So we will take a, a bit of a view uh, on that one. Uh, we have supported some uh, early stage entrepreneurs. So within their first 12 months of starting up, but they've um, had to provide you know really robust business planning cash flow forecasting but we can tie it all up and go yeah actually this looks like it's going to work okay so the best advice there really is to talk to you isn't it and just to have a chat uh, and see absolutely is yeah, yeah see where you are um is there a minimum i think i think i know the answer to this one is there a minimum number of employees for eligibility or company structure uh, no, there's not. Uh, as long as you've got one, that's fine. Um, <laughs> and uh, no, no, nothing around a business structure. So you could be a limited company, you could be a sole trader, you could be an LLP, um, that, but there is a maximum number of employees, which is 249. So uh, no okay. minimum. No minimum. That's really good to know. Um, and can you fund vehicles, new premises or building extensions? Uh, generally, no, we can't. Potentially vehicles, depending on what it is and how it works, uh, but not not premises and not building extensions, uh, because more often than not, it's not the business that is benefiting from it, but the freeholder that will be benefiting mm. ultimately from it all. So, so it's all about driving that business growth, isn't it? It's it, all about absolutely. anything that's going to drive growth in your business. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, how much um, of a fund is there left? Um, in the invest for grants and what's the last date for applications are you yeah so we, that yet yeah yeah we've got 2.8 million pound to give away we've um uh allocated about 1.4 million so we're about halfway through the grant fund we just really pleased to say we've just had an extension um confirmed for the contract only verbally confirmed we're waiting for the paperwork to come through so the grant fund will be available through all projects must close by the end of March 2023 so that means you'd have had to have had your funding through from uh, Brighton Hove City Council but they've agreed to fund you and you need to be demonstrating that you've achieved your outputs. I think the last opportunity for applications will probably be around about this time next year. Okay brilliant so there's a little time yet so that's as long as really you've got important. a very 
so, yeah, as long as your project something that could be turned around relatively quickly. Okay, so we've got about a year yet then. So there's lots of yeah. there's lots of available time to take up, you know, to take this up. Um, yeah. I've got another couple of questions here popping up. Um, on software development, um, do we need development suppliers to be based in the UK or can they be outside the country? I know a lot of people are working with development um, companies outside the UK. So is that is that okay for this grant? Yeah, we've uh, we've uh, I think we funded definitely reviewed some uh, mm -hmm. software developments happen outside the UK. You know, we understand what it is that. Um, cheaper from a cash point of view yeah. <laughs> ultimately how that works out again it, from what we understand it, it can be a bit of a mixed bag but we yes we have funded overseas software development i'm pretty sure we have thank you um and oh a couple more yes we're going to pop a link um to the application form in the chat we can do that natalie and i can do that for you yeah i'll dig the link that's out that's absolutely not at all and as always these um webinars are going to be available um you know the recording of these webinars will be available and um vicky asked what about van leases and software as in phone apps and developments uh not van leases, I'm afraid, but mm -hmm. phone apps, yes, should be as long as they're linked to the growth of your business. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, it's just having a mobile website-ish type thing. So, um, and I, I see what Andrew's putting, could we fund an electric bus for a parish under a community interest company? That's an interesting one. Would have to uh, seek further advice on that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, whether it's electric or petrol or diesel or anything wouldn't make any difference. It's whether we can fund a bus. Um, mm -hmm. A community interest company would be fine to work with yeah yeah because that's a, that's a legal body and probably quite good because it has the asset locks and stuff associated with it brilliant absolutely brilliant gareth i'm going to stop the questions there if that's okay with yeah you. i couldn't um, ask them in the chat so please I mean, yeah. if, if you've got any more questions for gareth please pop them in the chat and we can come back to them a little bit later on in the webinar um and obviously gareth is going to be online for us with us um throughout this webinar so as i say we can come back to those um i just wanted to quickly hand over thank you gareth uh, the, thank you so much i just no wanted problem. to quickly hand over to uh, natalie from freedom works actually who has a brilliant and um, brilliantly behind behind the scenes in every single one of these webinars so big shout out for that but also um as you know freedom works have actually hosted two of these series um and have actually taken advantage of grant funding themselves so i just thought nat could quickly talk about what they've been up to over to you nat thank you very much cheryl yeah we have been super lucky to have been able to access two of these brilliant grants and work closely with gareth so i just want to come on for five minutes and tell you a little bit about Freedom Works and, and the grant funding that we've received and how it's just really helped us, especially at the difficult time. So I'm Nat, um, I'm the project manager at Freedom Works. Freedom Works is a um, co-working space or a collection of co-working spaces across the southeast. So we've got eight spaces now and we're growing um, and about 3,000 members. And during lockdown, we were severely impacted. So we're a, a business that relies on people coming in and making a home from home in our spaces. Um, so when lockdown hit, um, we weren't forced to close as a business, but we were all told not to, um, we were all told to work from home. So overnight, it became very quiet for us. And then even when restrictions did start to ease a little bit, we still had that kind of hesitancy um, of people not being sure whether they wanted to come back in or not. Um, we also had to manage a lot of social distancing restrictions, i.e. Um, head counts and numbers that can come into the office. And then we also had staff that were self-isolating um, or the number of staff that were on furlough. So these were all challenges that we just weren't prepared for um, and had a big impact on the business. And it also meant that we had to think differently about the way that we worked in the way that we did things um, and on that note like the whole digital adoption really came into play we knew that we had to do things online um, somehow but the challenge is how do you do that when revenue is really down how do you then start investing into projects um, and this is where the business hot house and invest for at the council have been brilliant so i just want to really yeah advocate it really promote it and um, tell anyone on this call um, who is interested to definitely go and check it out so these are a couple of the projects um, that we were very lucky to get some funding to help with. Um, the first one was um, a complete revamp of our website and also our online booking system. So previously our website was 
I guess nothing more than just a nice brochure. It didn't have any functionality behind it. Um, but what we knew that we had to do was make all of our products and services available online so that people could access them and buy them online. Um, we also created new products. So we started to um, really push some virtual products so you could have a virtual office with us if you didn't want to use your home address for example um, and we also made all of our products a lot more flexible as well so you could actually just come in and have a desk for a few hours or come in and book um, a meeting room just for a few hours because people don't want to commit when there's that uncertainty so people weren't signing up for long leases anymore um, so this was one brilliant project um, that we had support from the business hot house to do and it really helped our sales throughout lockdown um, and even now the engagement and the number of hits and, and what people do on our website has really um, transformed and also there's a whole back end to this as well that just means that as a team internally we can work much more productively um, so that was one project. And then the second project that we were lucky to have funding for was another kind of a tech project. It was called Doorflow. Um, and again, this was for, it, this enables people to come in and out of the business um, with a kind of a key fob. Um, but you don't need someone to be sat there at a desk letting you in. And it also allowed people to come into our offices 24 seven, which was wonderful too. So for anyone that didn't want to come in when, the, when it was a, a busier period during COVID, they, they could come in in the evening. So again, it, it was a product that we didn't use to sell before, 24 seven access. Um, but yeah, it, it, it has really helped us um, and, and be more productive. So to wrap up, because um, I don't want to take time away from the brilliant digital champions, what's stopping you? I think, Having gone through this myself and done grant funding, and for those of you on the call, I know that you think, oh my goodness, there's a lot of paperwork that's involved with this. It's cumbersome, it's technical. It isn't as bad as you think, and especially not for the smaller grants. So for, uh, for the under 5K grants, and Gareth, I'm saying this, having heard you say that the process has just changed, but really it, it's, it isn't as hard as you think. So just have a look um, and have a read through um, before making any assumptions. And also know that when Gareth was saying, you know, about the business model and the cash flow, there's templates that the hot house um, provide for these <laughs> as well. So, you know, if, if you haven't got a business case, for example, or you haven't got those kind of cash flow forecasts, there's some support out, out there to, to get all of those things done and in place. Um, the process, like Gareth said, is really quick. Actually, we were approved really quickly. So you don't have to sit on your hands for months waiting whether, um, you know, whether this is going to happen. And then also once the work is done, the, um, the payment of the funds for us was really quick too. So thank you for that. Um, and then to end on, what are the two things that you can do to just get the ball rolling? So the first one is have a look at the application form and you'll see that it isn't that bad um, and the way to get the application form is to to email invest4 at brightonandhove.gov.uk and then the second thing you can do is join a webinar and that one is already ticked because you're here today um, but if not there's some brilliant webinars that Gareth has done on Facebook um, and on LinkedIn if you did want to kind of recap on on some of the basics of it so that's it done for me in a nutshell um, but yeah highly recommended and thank you everyone brilliant, brilliant. Thank, thanks Nat Thanks, Nat. Thank you so much. And thank you for all your hard work behind the scenes as well. Oh, very welcome. Um, from me. Um, so um, any questions for Nat, obviously pop them in the chat. And I can see that Gareth is, is gaily answering questions as we go along. So thank you for that. This is all going to get very confusing, I think, in about 20 minutes time with lots of questions coming in. Um, I'd like to hand over to our digital champions. I can see that I've got, well, Lisa Kerr in the room, who's going to be talking on behalf of Coaster Capital and as a digital champion. Uh, Malcolm Duffett, who's here. I've got Andrew Kerry Beddle, who is also here. Uh, thank you. I've got Susan Winchester. Susan, where are you? And I've got Rob Lawrence here as well. So we've got these wonderful people in the room. They're all going to chat about um, some case studies and some things that they've worked on, and give you some ideas as to how you might be able to use this brilliant day's worth of support. And then we're going to open it up to you guys and just take questions from the floor. So I will hand over to you, Lisa, and I will be very quiet for the next 20, 20, 30 minutes and let you get on with it. Brilliant. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Cheryl. OK, can everyone see the screen? Well, thank you. Um, also like to add my thanks to, uh, to you and to Nat for doing great uh, hosting of series one and this series and your lovely smiley face every time we come on to these sessions, Cheryl. So thank you. And Gareth, yes, nuclear decommissioning makes me smile every time you say it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, so today I am um, presenting, as Cheryl said, as a Coast to Capital Digital Champion. Um, and also I am presenting just to introduce the Coast to Capital Growth Hub as well. So usually we'd have the very lovely Karen Tyrrell, who is one of the Growth Relationship Associates, um, but she unfortunately wasn't available today. So I am covering her section as well as Digital Champions. So a little bit about the Growth Hub itself, it provides free, impartial government funded advice, support, investment, strategic leadership to help drive sustainable business success and economic growth in West Sussex, Greater Brighton and East Surrey. That is a lot of big, long words. So as someone who's worked with the Growth Hub quite a lot, um, I would just say that they're an absolutely brilliant team of people who are here to support our local small and growing businesses in whatever way they can and they're all so friendly um, so helpful and they will just point you in the right direction so i am such a huge advocate for coast cap and things they can do to help people link there to the website these slides will also be sent out afterwards this program as cheryl mentioned we're coming to the end of series three so i won't go through all of this slide um, but just to say that Coast to Capital is supporting all of these webinars through the series of the Digital Champions. What do Digital Champions offer? Free digital support. So we can't say this often enough. You can have up to eight hours of free support, fully funded by Coast to Capital. As long as you have attended any one of the online workshops in this series, so just one out of the four series of webinars, so including today, if you're on this one today, you qualify um, and you can get up to eight hours of free specialist support. You can use any one of the seven strong team of, of champions. Uh, most of us are actually on the call today, so please, please just ask any questions you have about it. And as it says here, each digital champion offers a different blend of skills. So we have most of us here today, um, and I'll let everyone chat for themselves, but at a very high level, this is the seven of us. So ask Andrew about websites and CRMs. Speak to me if you're looking at digital tech for productivity and processes. Malcolm, everything e-commerce. Rachel, who's not here today, is our SEO expert. We've got Rob online today, he'll talk about digital transformation. Roya is not here today, but she uses digital growth. And Susan, who is here today, if you're after digitally focused product and service initiatives. The important thing is how do you access the digital champion support? And again, this can look like it's quite a lot of paperwork to be done using the contact form, give all these details. You then get a follow up, you get a digital review. Again, we just wanted to let you know that this is a really quick process. And where it says on the forms and on here, you need to say what area of expertise you require. For this program, you can just put you need digital champion support. So you don't have to be specific about what that support might be. The Growth Relationship Associates will give you a ring, they will follow up with you, and they will help signpost you to the right support. They will help you understand which digital champion can help you out the best. And similarly, you can contact any one of us, and we will also help you. So even though we are all consultants for Coast to Capital, we work as one big team and we all know each other. We know our strengths and we know each other's strengths. And we will always point you to the right digital champion because that's what we're all here for. We're here to help businesses. So don't be afraid to email, pick up the phone to any one of us and just tell us what you're thinking. And we will let you know if we are the right person to help you or if we're not, which of the others is the right person. The contact form is on the Coast Capital website. There's the link there. It literally is a few details about your business and just to note that you need digital champion support. And then the digital review, again, that is very, very quick. I've just put a slide in here to show you the outcome of this. So this is just an online questionnaire. It's 20 multi-choice questions, so it will take you just a few minutes. And it's just an extra help to see how you're doing across these different digital areas. 
Um, and it's not, you don't have to get, a, it's not 100%, you don't have to get this right, you can't fail this test. It's just something to help us as champions understand the areas where you might need that extra bit of help and advice. Just to give a quick overview um, of one of the days that I'm doing. So each of the champions who's online today is going to give you a quick overview now of how they can help, but in terms of what kind of days they are providing for people. Um, so I am delivering one, for example, where we are going to be looking at all of the different systems that a company already has in place because they are creating a whole load of data from all of these systems, but they don't know how to pull that together into something they can use. So we're going to be looking at kind of data visualization and how you can use that. We're going to be talking about a possible move from the Google suite to Microsoft 365. Um, so that might be something that you're considering um, or even whether you should take one of those in the first place. And we're also going to talk about how to manage change. So if you do go for a tech change within the business, how do you manage that with your staff, with your customers, and what the kind of steps involved in moving from one system to the other? So that's just one of the things that I cover. I thought that'd be a quick example. Um, and now I'm going to stop the screen share and I'm going to open it up to our other digital champions. So we've got Rob, Malcolm and Susan are each going to give you just a little bit of background. And then I can see we've also got Andrew online and then it's just open to questions. So in the chat box, or just pop your microphone on and ask us. Thanks, All right. thanks Lisa. Um, I think I was uh, nominated as, uh, <laughs> as uh, coming in after you. So hi everyone, and uh, thanks for introducing uh, the Digital Champion Program, Lisa. Um, my name is Malcolm, um, as you've seen on the slide, um, uh, e-commerce is my speciality. I've spent 20 odd years now in digital and web and e-commerce and mostly for direct to consumer product based businesses. Um, whether that you're selling yeah, products directly to consumers um, via online retail or even online subscription. Um, I've also worked client size. So I've looked after the channel for brands selling products to consumers and built teams and, and revenues online. Um, my work with the, it, with the Digital Champion Program and Coast to Capital over the last year or so has seen me work with a, a number of um, different size businesses actually from kind of micro solopreneur startups to kind of up towards medium sized businesses with small uh, and growing digital teams uh, looking to push on even further. Um, the, the, I guess a couple of examples I can give you is uh, I'm currently almost at the end of delivering one set of support for a business that's actually been on um, the, the, the series of uh, Recover and Rise uh, webinars. Um, and they are in the kind of micro startup solopreneur phase. So for them, I've been helping them understand, if you like, the approach to e-commerce, how to present the, the brand, their products, and their messaging uh, online in their new website. Um, I've helped them plan out, if you like, the structure of a new e-commerce website where they can best present their products. Um, I've also been giving them advice on best practice for SEO and, and marketing channels and perhaps where to be looking at. And I've also helped them build um, a, an annual marketing plan to help guide them in their own thought processes when they're looking at doing activity to bring traffic to their website. Um, uh, earlier this year, I was working with a slightly bigger uh, business um, who had just employed a um, for the first time, like an e-commerce digital marketing manager into the business to sort of take over what throughout COVID had been an increase in online sales um, and the business realized that they needed to kind of upskill internally. So they brought somebody in to manage uh, the whole channel, uh, look after marketing or digital marketing activity as well as looking after a new website. So my role for that business was providing support to the, the, the person that was coming into that role, um, helping them set sort of KPIs and understand channel objectives for, uh, for growth in that channel. Um, looking at resourcing the team, looking at internal structures, who was there, what skill sets already existed, what they may potentially need in the future as that business grew. Um, and then in a, a third day of support that I've given uh, was really quite down at tactical level for, for one business, um, reasonably mature in, in many ways in terms of their offline uh, and kind of retail offering. And their online uh, offering was also reasonably um, 
kind of mature and having recently gone through a bit of a redesign. Um, so they wanted specific help in two channels. One was um, SEO, search engine optimization, um, having just replatformed for to a, a brand new website. And the other was looking at the performance of their email marketing activity. So they wanted to understand um, what was working, what types of content was working, um, you know, repeat levels and repeat buying levels. So it's quite, um, you know, performance related and very specific down to a couple of channels. So I think certainly from my perspective, and I believe, you know, certainly some of the other digital champions will, will also mirror this, is that we're able to work at, you know, quite broad, high strategic level and planning um, with a lot of businesses. But also, I think we, we've all between us got a lot of kind of day-to-day -day experience, and, and certainly some of us can offer kind of, you know, day-to-day -day tact tactical uh, advice um, for, uh, for opportunities for growth uh, for your online business. Um, so yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm available to uh, for the rest of the session for any questions that you've got on e-commerce or, or digital marketing um, later on in the session. Great, thanks, Malcolm. Okay, Rob, would you like to come in next? Hello. Right, just going to share my screen. Right. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Rob Lorenz, um, and my company is called Kaizen Digital. And uh, what we aim to do is help uh, businesses and organisations of all types, really, uh, get fit for digital business. Um, so I am the principal consultant. Uh, I, I work as a consultant. I work as a coach. Uh, my specialities are marketing, e-commerce and uh, digital transformation. Um, I'm also author of a book called Get Fit for Digital Business, which uh, the objective of that book really was to help SME leaders get their heads around the many moving parts of digital and, uh, and, and really get their periscope up, step back and think about actually what strategy do we need to have to make the most of digital going forward to, to really survive and thrive in the digital age versus getting lost in the sort of tactical before we've decided what we should be doing. Um, so I really work with SMEs leaders to do three things um, in simple terms, help them understand where they are now in terms of their current digital business capability, um, help them identify the digital opportunities uh, and perhaps threats in their market and work with them to develop a digital strategy and a implementation plan because without execution, it's not much use uh, to seize those opportunities and, and counter those threats. So um, um, a little bit about my background. Um, I've been in business for, as you can tell by looking at me, for uh, about 35 years uh, as a general manager, a marketing director and so on. But about 20 years ago, uh, I specialised um, in, uh, in digital because I was working in the travel industry and actually the student travel in the street and the students were the first to uh, embrace digital and uh, travel was the first industry to really um, get disrupted by digital. So I started pretty early, uh, well over 20 years ago. Um, after that, I set up and ran a full service digital agency in London and we did everything. We, we did scores and scores of website development, website design, SEO, paid search, affiliate marketing. So pretty much social, social media, you name it analytics um, we, we covered it and uh, you know that's really been the story of, of what I've been doing and then uh, my latest uh, full-time job was uh, I was seven years as e-commerce director at 2e travel plc looking after a portfolio of 100 uh, 104 actually SME businesses around the UK and internationally um, and I was on the board there driving digital transformation and and helping those business leaders um um, you know, really get their businesses fit for the digital age, um, which led me into my consultancy business. Um, and I uh, started this about seven or eight years ago. 
Uh, in that time, I worked with the National Gallery, uh, so I was the communications director there with a brief to drive digital transformation on an interim basis. Um, a digital development plan for the National Army Museum, working with clients at the moment, such as ARC, that's that strange looking orb you can see on the right hand side, which you go 60 metres into the air in Bristol when um, just got planning permission. Um, so uh, that's something exciting, but actually mainly I'm working with, with, with SMEs. Um, and just going to give you a quick, quick example of, of uh, one of the clients that I'm, I'm working with uh, under the Digital Champion uh, umbrella. Um, solopreneur, B2B, marketing services, obviously not going to say who it is, but um, we're going to pack in to that eight hours, you know, a good review of the products and services um, and the business model as it relates to digital and the profitability of those various um, approaches to market. We're going to identify um, some market opportunities, perhaps that, that um, um, have been missed. Uh, we're going to identify um, the potential for turning some of uh, the, the, the great uh, experience and knowledge that the client has into digital training products and you know what software and uh, um, you know how you actually go about making that happen. We're going to look at sales and marketing, uh, identify ways to sharpen up the website pitch and proposition. We're going to undertake a high level content marketing review um, and uh, I'm going to make some proposals. We're going to discuss strategies and tactics to reduce the length of the sales cycle, which you know we know for a lot of SMEs is a real bugbear in how long it actually takes to convert and, and what strategies we can use through digital to, to uh, shorten that period. And then we're going to explore any marketing potential with uh, other, other organizations. Um, and if, it's, if that wasn't enough, we're also going to have a quick high, high look at some uh, software as a service marketing tools, because uh, I think we've identified for this client that if they use a uh, very low cost, um, but highly effective online system, they can solve their lack of CRM, the difficulties they have with email marketing, the difficulties they have with it, analytics and website landing pages and so on, and solve that through one application um, so that they can develop their sales funnel and uh, get more prospects and turn more of those prospects into customers. So just to finish off, um, yes, work with mainly SMEs and Really, you know, again, I'm trying to help business leaders get their organizations fit for digital business and create a healthier company that's more productive uh, and generally healthier. So that's me. Well, <clears throat> thanks, Rob. And then lastly, we're just going to hear briefly from um, Susan, who is also going to tell you about how we can help you get these digital champion days and how we can give some value to your business, and then we will open up to all of your questions. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Susan Winchester. I'm a marketing a business strategy professional. Um, I've been working in business um, for about 15, 20 years um, with a number of years experience. Um, how do I work? Um, well, I've, I've got a number of examples. Um, I have worked with, uh, say, a telecom company and a uh, digital company in uh, in uh, Southwest London, and they had like three products, and one, two of which were going to be obsolete. And one, and I, I, I basically looked at their external factors in terms of what they needed to do, um, in terms of what the trends are, where the market was going. I kind of understand where they're looking at, and I also looked internally in terms of um, their processes, their systems, their channels, what they were, where they were currently going. And I basically um, look at what we can do and, and sort of like try and bridge the gap between their capability and then what we can do uh, to drive them forward in the external market. So that's kind of like how I work in terms of it's a lot of analysis based, it's a lot of trying to understand and work out where the business is currently at and asking sort of like those difficult questions, basically getting under the bonnet of that company, understanding where the leadership is, understanding where their value, where their value proposition is to really understand how you can then bridge the gap in, in, in the di using digital platforms to drive that forward. Um, I would, you know, 
it could well mean that you know I spend four hours with you and just work out and go through those steps and look at those look at those both those external factors coupled with the internal factors to look at them where the gaps are and it might well mean that I then bring Lisa in to look at the processes because that might be a gap that's missing and that's kind of how I work mine's quite exploratory to try and understand uh, to understand basically your business and where you're operating and where your what, what what your golden nuggets are and how we can um how we can basically position them so that you could get more growth and drive that forward and that's kind of me in a nutshell well thanks susan um so we're going to open the floor um <clears throat> to any questions that you've got now um, I thought if I may, Cheryl, I will ask you to read through them because you're fantastic at keeping track of what's going on in them. I could do it if you like, but uh, I've been concentrating on the screen. Um, but if I can, I think maybe if we could start by just saying, you know, how does the, the digital champion process work You know, in reality? How do we go through those steps? Um, mm -hmm. And Andrew, you've not said anything yet, so I wonder if you might want to just answer that one and then I can scroll I can scroll through and see what other questions we've had. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Um, so, so very briefly, it's, um, it's a pretty straightforward process, as Lisa said. Um, you do that very quick little questionnaire. Um, you can have a simple brief that simply says, I'd like to launch a new product. How can technology help me? Um, I'd like to build a new website. You know, how can I do it? But there's that eight hours available. So in terms of how it actually works, I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, as business owners, you might want uh, two or three online Zoom sessions, uh, and they may be just to bounce ideas backwards and forwards um, as to how you want your project to run. And that's really what we're fit, here for is help and guidance. Um, you might also want a face to face meeting. So what you could do, for example, um, if you've got a website project is then we would come along to your office um, we'd have kind of like the usual flip charts and things and um, we'd say, OK, what do you want messaging to be? How do you want to develop your website? Has it got to be mobile friendly? Uh, has it got to communicate products or services? Uh, and we'd simply take it like that. And then we can follow up either with Zoom calls again or a further visits or simply by writing you kind of an outline as to what we think you should do. But it's a pretty straightforward process and, and very friendly and very much designed for one to one with business owners. So it's, it's a personable approach and it's completely free. Well, thanks, Andrew. Lisa, can I interject? I've actually got a couple of questions that have come in direct to me. Please um, do, yes. I was definitely yeah. scrolling up here. No, that's okay. That's all right. right. That's okay. First and foremost, can I, as a business owner, not me, but one, um, split my eight hours of support between you lovely digital champions? So could I do four hours with Malcolm, four hours with Lisa, or two with Susie and two with Andrew? And, you know, how does that work? Um, so in general, it would be one day um, with one person. Um, but I can go back and, and ask what the possibilities would be. I don't think we'd be able to split days kind of going, I'll have an hour each with seven people just because of the logistics of all of that. <laughs> um, but if, if there are two completely separate areas, um, then I will go back and ask on that one and just confirm for you. But Malcolm, do you know that? Yeah, I, 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 un I understand from the programme, but it will, it should, we will double check it. But I understand if there are two very completely different kind of objectives of the business with, mm. with, with, with the, the kind of marry up with a um, digital champion's expertise, then I believe you can apply for a second full day. But in terms of um, the, the eight hour packages, though, those are kind of like a digital work support package per champion. Those eight hours that you get with a champion, it will be up to uh, you and the champion to decide how best to deliver it and what's easiest, you know, for you. So the, the, the one that I've just recently been working on, in fact, this afternoon will be my last of four two hour Zoom sessions with this particular business over the last sort of three weeks. So we've actually split that eight hours up into four two hour chunks. Um, and then between each session, they've been able to go away, do something and then come back with something for the next session or we just move on to the next topic. It may be. I mean, again, other day support, days of support that I've done have been like a half an hour kind of all in sort of workshop in, in half a day, maybe on site in person with one or the team of people that I'm working with. And then the follow on work, maybe that stuff that I'm doing remotely. 
and or then going back to project, you know, present or show or to work with them. So it's about, well, I think, working with your digital champion to, to you know, what works best for you and also your time scales and, and, and for the needs of your, uh, yeah, for your requirements. Well, thanks, Malcolm. And just seeing, um, I can see Vicky, you've asked a similar follow up question of can you get a discount for two? Um, well, you can get a fabulous discount because they're all fully funded by Coast to Capital. They're entirely free. So um, if, you, if they did agree to do the second day, then that would also be funded. Um, if you want to get additional time yourself, as Gareth um, mentioned, it is possible to get one of the Invest4 grants to cover this kind of work. So if you wanted to kind of do a package of work with one of us, then that would be, obviously can't guarantee, you have to see the application process, but growth consultancy and leadership and management development are two of the areas that are covered, are eligible for the Invest4 grant, which would give you 40% off or 40% funded by the lovely people at Invest4 as well. So I like the fact that you can take your eight hours and you can split it across because as a small business owner myself, the thought of finding eight hours in one hit makes me kind of scream and run to the hills. Um, unless, um, as I said to you previously, you're going to come around my house at midnight and we're going to do <laughs> midnight through till eight o'clock. So the fact that you can split it, I think, is wonderful. And that was another question, actually. Can you can you take advantage of, you know, digital champions and an Invest4 grant um, at the same time, because that is just a fabulous offer, isn't it? I feel like, a, you know, those tele shopper programs, I feel like one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but that's brilliant, isn't it? I'm um, going to offer you all a new Hoover for 20 quid in a minute. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. How long is this open for, Lisa, because, or, or any of the digital champions? Because we know we've got another series after Christmas mm -hmm. running with Always Possible. Um, how long have people got to apply? Because they may find that, when they follow the next series, there's something else that they want to do or something else that sparks their interest. Yes, certainly. So the programme is open throughout the Recover and Rise series. So certainly will run into the new year. Um, and you can ask at any point for any support. So even if it's something that's going to be covered in series four that you think you need support for, you don't have to wait for that webinar to have happened to come and get the support. So the support is available now. It's been available since the programme started um, and it's available until the programme ends. Um, beyond that, that would be for Coast Capital to decide. So they allocate the funding to the programme. So if there's any funding left over at the end, then it might be that we can expand that programme um, to a longer time scale. That's something to just look out for the announcements, but certainly available to the end of January. Um, and yes, you definitely can split up the eight hours in time scales. Um, particularly over Zoom. I don't think anyone could stand eight hours over Zoom. So two hour <laughs> slots or I tend to do half day slots, two of them, but that works really well. It gives you a chance to consider things between the sessions as well. So I actually find it more productive for everyone. Andrew, you have a hand up there, sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's quite strange because um, I, I recently joined West Sussex as a councillor, but um, so I've had some conversations about the links between Coast Capital and West Sussex. So th there's a couple of points, I think, on timing in that obviously with the growth champions, um, you wouldn't particularly want your, your eight hours to go on over sort of four to six months. But I think it's fair to say, for example, uh, one project I did, which was developing uh, a website, helping them to. Um, there was a first Zoom session, which is talking about the messaging uh, and the kind of elevator pitch for the business. The second one was talking about the the uh, the media and then the content. And then the third one was we've developed our website. What do you think? And that did take over three months. But coming back to Lisa's point uh, about how long the programme is going to run, um, I have had conversations within West Sussex. And certainly they're looking to run a second programme on this. It's yet to be agreed on funding, um, but therefore that does mean that it may well extend beyond March. And, and I'd be amazed if Coast to Capital didn't also extend it as well in terms of growth champion support, because that's what we're here for at the end of the day. Well, thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Um, I can see a question in the chat box. Sorry, rattling through. I'm conscious we've only got six minutes left here. Um, Vicky, you said you're really excited now. How long does it take to set up? Um, not long at all. So um, the team at Coast Capital, Ryan, Karen, Nass, they are fantastic. They turn things around really quickly. So get the form in. Um, if you submit the forms on the website and you want to drop any of us an email to say you've done it, we can check that they are picked up quickly. 
um, and then you just agree the scope of support with the champion, um, fill out that uh, DNA6 digital profile, which as I said is five minutes, it's 20, tick the box and get the answer. Um, and then we just both sign a form to say that you can have the day and, and you get on with it. So they can be turned around within a couple of days. Um, and I saw another question up here uh, about, about do champions about refer? Yeah. yeah. So do champions refer to each other if you ask the wrong one for support? Absolutely. Yes. So um, as I mentioned, you know, we all work as a big team. We're all here as part of Coast to Capital and supporting the Coast to Capital Digital Champion Programme. We're not here you know, to promote our own businesses. We're here to make sure that you get the best support for your business. So if you came to me and said you wanted help with marketing, after all the expert marketers here had stopped rolling around the floor laughing, they would all know full well that I would say, actually, let's pass you on to someone who knows a whole lot more about that than I do. And similarly, if you wanted to learn how to use Trello, they would all point you towards me. You know, we, we work together, we work as a team. So do not be concerned at all about who you contact, whether it's the team at Coast to Capital or whether you reach out to one of us directly, we will absolutely help you. And similarly, if you just don't have a clue what you need, so where you said, uh, Rory, you said, based on what you think you need, if you don't even know what you think you need, that's absolutely fine. So just tell us that, put that on the forms. We can do a digital champion day. You know, we'll work with you to figure out which of us might be the best to help, but you could have that eight hours just to help you brainstorm what it is that you need so that you then go off and look at the right things. So the brilliant thing about this scheme is it's completely flexible. We will completely tailor it to support you and yeah. we will absolutely do the very best we can to get you the right support. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Lisa. I think the takeaways from this session actually are please don't be afraid. Um, yeah. There seems to be quite a lot of stigma about grants, funding, business support, mm -hmm. business advice, especially when it's labelled up as free. It tends to send people <laughs> to the hills for some reason. It's a catch. Uh, as if it's a catch, <laughs> or as if there's something, you know, that they have to sign something and seal it and, and you know, blood and everything. But there really isn't with this. And I think if you are interested, just a five minute call with Coast Capital or one of the digital champions or with Gareth will put your mind at ease so much. I have learned so much over the last couple of months um, and I've got all sorts of boxes ticked to get all sorts of support and funding now. So um, I just wanted to really wrap up unless anybody's got any further burning questions. Um, last chance. Oh, one, one come in. Um, from Mark, how can I support this proposition with my own skills, Agile, Scrum, Trello, Lean Kit, Myra, Confluence, Startup, Scrum, Ways of Working, Coaching um, from Mark. Lisa, do you want to have a go at that one? Um, could you just clarify what you mean by that, Mark? Do you mean how can you get the best well, out just, of the day? Um, hi, hi, Lisa. Hi. You, you noticed that um, you said around you'd be able to provide um, champion support in terms of Trello. Yeah. So I was just thinking, you know, how could I... Um, uh, support some of the work around uh, the region in terms of um, agile coaching so I've seen other people look at software development for funding so just to um, help this proposition in terms of my skill set so that's, that's um, sounds like you need to be a digital champion Mark <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so for this program um, there are the seven of us for digital champions um, but as Andrew said, Mark, I'm sure there will be future programmes, so you can certainly look out for the tenders um, to become a digital champion. Um, and if you're interested in becoming a growth champion for Case Capital in general, which is a slightly different service, um, just get in touch with the team at Coast to Capital. So they're always happy to hear from people who want to join the wider growth champion programme, which provides support. Thank you. And Claire, thank you very much. What a fantastic service. Thank you. We all aim to do a great job for all of you and Coast Capital are just brilliant in their support. So I couldn't agree more. The service that they give to everyone is fantastic and we are all delighted to be part of it, as is the team at the Hot House. So Gareth and the team there also brilliantly helpful on the grants. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, Nat, you're waving at me. Is there something you want to jump in with? No, you're not waving. Sorry, that, that was supposed to be a little clap. Oh, that was, that was brilliant. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, think, I think, Natalie, and I have got that sort of end of series feeling. You know, we're, we're sort of a bit overexcited today. But just um, to wrap up, yes, we are going to be obviously sending out this recording. Hopefully you've got all the links and all the information and all the contact details. If you haven't, then please get in touch with either Natalie or myself or with Lisa um, and we can give you those details or with Gareth. Um, all it remains to say is thank you on behalf of Freedom Works for coming along to this webinar for the last uh, seven sessions. And thank you to Lisa, to Malcolm, to Gareth, to, to Nat, to Rob, to Susie, to Andrew today for, for your time and your expertise. And um, it's been lovely working with you all. So we shall see you, no doubt, in January. Thank, thank you. you. Well, Thanks, thank you, everyone. Thanks, and nice to see you all. Bye now, everyone. Thank Take you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.